Hey guys, wow, it is really rainy and windy outside today, but I think that's perfect for the lesson that we're gonna be talking about tonight and the scripture that I'm using. Normally I would record these lessons on Saturday night or Sunday morning before church, and this morning I tried, but it just was not coming out right. And so now I'm sitting here Sunday afternoon trying to get this lesson done so I can get it uploaded, and I think I realized why I couldn't do my lesson this morning because Doug and I had basically the same message uh, today, and believe me, I planned it out before I heard his sermon, so Doug, well, I guess we're just on the same brainwave today. But I think, I really do think that God is giving Doug and I the same message because it's such an important one for us to hear, um, for, for youth, for kids, um, all the way up through adults. And it's just so important for us to be growing in our faith, and that's something that I want to challenge you guys with tonight. Um, normally, we would be doing tonight around a bonfire. It would be our last night of middle school youth group, and we would sit on the playground, and I would read some scripture to you, and I would give you a challenge for the summer. Not that we don't see each other during the summer, but we don't have the same kind of lessons um, as we would normally do during the school year. And so usually I like to leave you with a challenge over the summer um, for you to work on. And so that's what tonight's lesson is going to be. Um, I said at the beginning of this that the weather is perfect for the story that we're using because um, Doug also referenced it this morning. Uh, we are talking about the wise and the foolish builders, uh, that parable. And so we're going to be reading out of there tonight and a little bit out of Ephesians, which Doug also used, but I'm using a couple different verses than he used this morning. Um, so if you have your Bible with you, and you can open to Matthew chapter 7. Um, I'm going to be reading from verses 24 through 27 for the wise and foolish builders. And then eventually we'll get to Ephesians 3. So first we're going to be reading from Matthew 7 verses 24 through 27. And then um, through uh, in Ephesians a little bit. So if you have your Bible with you, if you have a pen or a pencil or your highlighters, um, I just encourage you again to get those out so that we can talk and highlight and underline things as we go through this scripture. So let's start reading. The wise and the foolish builders, Matthew 7 verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This story was always one of my favorite ones to sing about when I was little, but I don't think I really understood the meaning behind it. I just really liked the actions with the song and everything like that. But as I got older, one of the things that really stuck out to me was the weather. <laughs> and like today, it is rainy and it's windy in this story. And I think it's really important for us to realize that the weather for the wise man and the weather for the foolish man is the same. Because just because we build our lives on Jesus, just because we are the wise builder, um, doesn't mean that we're not going to have those storms of life and that bad weather that happens. Just like the foolish man isn't going to be guaranteed all of the bad weather in life. Maybe they're going to have more sunny days than we do, but it's the foundation that we're building on that is so different. I have some Jenga bricks here right here and this receipt um so i'm gonna build a little house on my bible which is gonna be my solid foundation right because our solid foundation is on built on christ alone and then my my sandy foundation is a receipt um, from shopping. So things of this world. Um, maybe for you it's sports or shopping or um, even, even like your friendships. Maybe that's what you're building your house on. And so I'm going to build one house on here and one house on my Bible. And obviously we know which one is going to stand up better. The one on the on the receipt on the things of this world is already kind of falling down. Oh, can't even put a third brick on there because it just slides off. We'll see if I can get that to stay even a little bit. Oh, now they're all sliding off. Well, that's clearly not a good foundation, right? Okay, and then I'm gonna put the other ones here. Oh, that is just completely falling apart. 
Uh, then we're gonna build our other house right here. Let's see, this nice tall house, good solid foundation. And I want you to have both of these pictures in your mind as we're talking tonight. We can talk about the wise man and the foolish man, um, but I want you guys to think about what what these foundation bricks are. Um, and so we have it built on our on the Bible, right? Um, obviously, this one's on top of my Bible, and that's not really supposed to be what it looks like. Whoa, those bricks are just falling everywhere. Um, this one is built upon the things of this world, this receipt, right? What, what are you building your house upon? And I know that we've talked about this before in youth group, and I'm sure you have had this lesson coming at you since you were three years old. Um, but I really want you to take note of that. Um, Doug talked about, a, about priorities today um, and things that we should neglect and things that we should prioritize. And so maybe the things that you should neglect are um, what this foundation looks like, this crazy foundation with the bricks falling everywhere. And maybe the things that you need to prioritize are right here. If you have Jenga blocks at home and your parents will let you, I encourage you to take a few and write down the things that you want to prioritize. My challenge to you for this summer is to find those things to prioritize. I want you to think about your life in one year or five years or even in 10 years. Stop and think about that for a second. What do you want your life to look like? Um, some of you will be in high school. Some of you will be in college. Some of you will have just graduated from college. Um, adults, I don't know what your life is going to look like in a year or in five years. I don't know what my life is going to look like. But I know that I want my faith to be stronger and I want it to be deeper. And so something that, that I want you guys to be challenged with, something that I want to challenge myself with, is looking at what kind of faith I want to have in a year or in five years or in ten years and work toward that goal. Just like you would with sports, um, you go to practice and you try to get better and um, you put work and you put effort into this sport that you are trying to learn. Um, we need to be putting that amount of effort or more amount of effort into our relationship with Jesus because Jesus is faithful all the time and we know that he is always there to come back to um, if we walk away from him. But it's really important for us to be putting in time in that relationship with him. Because if you didn't put any time into um, your your basketball career or your volleyball career, um, you wouldn't be very good, right? You can't just step onto a court and expect to be an NBA all-star. Um, I Honestly, I don't even know if that's a thing. I know football has all-stars. I'm not sure if NBA has all-stars. Oh man, I do not know my sports references. But... You can't expect to be the best person at basketball or volleyball or football without putting effort in, right? And we can't expect our relationship with Jesus to grow because we're not putting any effort in. We can't expect him to put all of the effort in and us to put none in, right? So think about what you want your faith to look like in a year or in five years and ask yourself what you can do to get to that point. Um, and so some things that I want you to think about. Maybe your goal is to read through the whole Bible. That's something that I didn't do until I was 25 um, that I know that I read all the way through. And I really wish that I had done it when I was younger. Or maybe your goal is to um, pray more. Maybe right now when you pray, it just kind of looks like a, a laundry list of things that you want Jesus to do for you. And maybe you know that that's not how you should be praying, but you don't really know how to pray otherwise. Maybe, maybe you know that you want to worship Jesus more and thank him more for who he is, but maybe you're having a hard time with that. Maybe you're having a hard time with uh, the words that you want to pray. Um, maybe you want to start talking to your friends more about Jesus. And that that's huge. That's so important. And I commend you for wanting to do that if that's you. And maybe that just takes talking um, about your story a little bit more. Maybe you should write down your story. Um, write down what Jesus has done for you. Maybe it doesn't look like the stories that you heard last week from Ian or Libby or Cannon. But that's okay because God uses every single one of our stories and and uses us where we are to talk to our friends and to spread 
um, his word and his gospel. And so I just want you to think about your life and what you want your faith to look like next year and see um, what you can do this summer to start that. Um, we're going to turn to Ephesians 3 and read through those scriptures. Oh, so if your parents will let you, if you have Jenga, take these three bricks and write down um, three things that you want to work on this summer. So maybe you want to work on prayer. Maybe it's just praying more, um, praying every single day. Um, maybe it's instead of praying for the things that you want, um, praying for the things that God wants for you instead. Um, maybe the next thing is uh, you want to be better at reading your Bible. Maybe right now your Bible seems a little bit boring to you and you only read your Bible um, out of obligation. And it's good for you to be reading your Bible even if it feels like obligation because that gets us into God's word. But I really want you guys to enjoy reading God's word. And so if that looks like um, maybe meeting with somebody from church that knows more about the Bible than you do um, or maybe using your physical Bible instead of your phone. That's something that I had to change. Um, like I've said in a bunch of lessons, maybe using a highlighter or a pen to take notes in your Bible. Um, or maybe it's like getting one of those Bibles that you can color in so it's more enjoyable to you. Look at what you need to change in order to make uh, that more enjoyable for yourself. So maybe it's reading your Bible with enjoyment. Um, and maybe this is connecting with people um, from church or, um, or telling your friends about Jesus. So think about what three things you want on those bricks and what three things you want to work on this summer. Or maybe it's just one thing that you want to work on this summer. But we're going to flip to Ephesians 3. And really, this is just my prayer for you tonight. Um, we're not going to go line by line through this scripture at all. I just want you to know that I am praying these scriptures over you, um, whether you are a kid that's listening or an adult that's listening. We are praying these things over you, and we we would love for you to be praying these things over us too, because as you'll hear in the scripture, um, being rooted in Christ's love is the most important thing that we can have as Christians. And so I'm just going to pray this prayer over you. Um, and I, I hope that you will go back and read it um, if you're not following along. But if you want to see mine, we went over this scripture in staff meeting one day. And I have so many notes on the side and so much underlining and circling of everything. I encourage you to go back in your Bible and read this scripture later for yourself. And do that for you too. Uh, because this, this is such an important scripture. So this is my prayer for you tonight. Um, it's from Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. I want you to know how high and deep and long and wide the love of Jesus is for you. And that's something that I hope that you will grow in this summer. Grow to be a disciple of Jesus and one who wants to make disciples out of your friends or anybody else in your life. Be somebody who wants to grow in your relationship with Christ and wants growth for others. And I know that most of you do. And I don't want to tell you that you are doing anything wrong because you guys are doing such an awesome job with reading your Bibles and reading scripture. But I know that we all have things that we can work on. So sit down with those Jenga blocks or a journal or something and figure out what you want God to do uh, in you this summer. I love you guys and I can't wait until we're together again. See you later.